Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Neutral Zone Rewind podcast. Uh, I am back again uh, with my co-host, Mitch. And uh, yeah, we have a couple tournaments from this past weekend. We had the Cavalier Classic at uh, UVA and the Dr. Peter Bro Classic at uh, Western Michigan. Uh, so we'll start with the Cavalier Classic, much smaller of the two tournaments. Um, Mitch, what scores we got for that? So yes, the Cavalier Classic, as its name uh, shows, was hosted by the University of Virginia. Um, it was only a three-team uh, tournament, and but that did not mean that we had a lack of action. It was actually probably one of the most jam-packed action uh, tournaments we've had of the year. It started out with James Madison <laughs> getting a victory over Maryland, a 3-1 to one convincing victory for the Dukes. Virginia then uh, got a 3-1 victory, uh, the same as JMU, over Maryland. An 0-2 day for Maryland. A weird day for the Terrapins as they looked pretty good in all of their tournaments so far this year, but they just got caught on the backside of a lot of catches and unfortunate mistakes, but you can't just have that and expect to have a good day. And then to round it off, uh, JMU versus uh, the host Cavaliers, it was a 4-2 victory for the Dukes. Yeah, uh, JMU definitely still <laughs> looking like they are uh, one of the top teams coming out of the East Coast region. Uh, but one of the bigger days, it, or bigger, you know, stories of the day was UVA finally getting a W over uh, WM, uh, UMD, sorry. Um, you know, UVA is, is kind of been the, the, the lone man at the bottom in that division uh, in the East Coast region for a little while now. Um, but when they're at full strength, they're a very underrated team. They uh, they beat UMD pretty convincingly, convincingly and um, UMD is a solid team. So I'm excited to see if maybe UVA can come out and uh, come to an out-of-region tournament one of these days, play some Ohio or Michigan teams. Um, yeah, I would love to see that. And from uh, UVA specifically, we'll give a little shout-out to uh, Wyndham White uh, the fifth. He was fantastic, uh, arguably the best player of the tournament that day. He just could not miss these catches. He was killing people in transition. Just fantastic day out of him. Uh, so, yeah, that's the Cavalier Classic. Uh, from there, we'll move on to the Dr. Peter Bro Classic, uh, WMU. A uh, lot more teams here and a lot more scores to get through. So, Mitch, what do we got for those? The Dr. Peter Bro Classic, the second annual uh, tournament. Uh, it started out with a Kent State victory over the host Western Michigan 4-2. to Michigan State then uh, routed uh, Concordia, Wisconsin by a score of 8 to nothing. Uh, Cleveland State won in a forfeited match over Central Michigan. Uh, the score before the forfeit was one to nothing. Then the second round of matchups saw the Spartans play against the Pickaxers of Wisconsin Platteville, and that was a six nothing shutout for uh, the defending national champions. Saginaw Valley won over Concordia, Wisconsin, pretty convincingly in a five two victory. Uh, to follow that up, uh, Grand Valley got a shutout over Central Michigan 5 to nothing. There was an early stoppage in that game. Um, yeah, that's really all that happened in that match. <laughs> then Grand Valley kept their winning ways going with a win over the host Broncos 5-1. to one. Then the first of two overtime games happened. Uh, Kent had a comeback victory over Saginaw Valley State 3-2. Uh, to two. Uh, we have a big storyline from that game, especially with some of the players in that game. Cleveland State then got a huge win in their program over Wisconsin Platteville in overtime, four to three. Then Kent would finish their day three and zero with a four two comeback victory over Wisconsin Platteville. A good day for the Flashes. Michigan State would uh, go three and zero after their uh, win over Cleveland State five to nothing with another early stoppage. Central Michigan would then beat. Uh, Concordia, Wisconsin, five to three in the highest scoring matchup or tied highest scoring matchup of the day. Michigan State would finish out the day four and zero, perfect with a three one victory over Grand Valley. And to wrap up the day, Saginaw Valley got a win over the host Broncos, three to one. Yeah, uh, a lot of really good storylines in that game. Uh, <clears throat> start out with the obvious: uh, Michigan State over GV. Uh, that. that Rivalry has been going strong for a while now. I fully expect these two programs to go back and forth all year, every time they see each other. Uh, and, you know, it's probably going to culminate in a very deep uh, playoff runs come Nationals time for both these teams. Uh, Kent going 3-0 and as well, had another very strong day, uh, you know, rebounding from their performance at BGSU where they went 0-3, just a much stronger performance with uh, their full roster now. And CSU, yeah, huge day, uh, two and one for the first time in a long time for CSU. Big win over UWP, uh, just 
caught out of their minds that game. Sky Thornsberry is uh, looking like she could very well end up being a MVP front runner for, uh, you know, women's MVP. And Alex Costello, Antoine Lamar, just fantastic performances all around from that that program. So, you know, it's, it's very exciting to see what they can do when they do have their full roster. I know they've had problems with uh, retention this year, but when they're at full strength, they're looking a lot better than we might think they were. Uh, and CMU also coming out, getting their first win back as a program in quite a long time. They've also struggled with recruitment, retention, and they, they haven't had the numbers to come out to a lot of tournaments lately. But they got if their first win have, here. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. If I remember correctly, I believe this is their second win because I believe we lost them last year at the same tournament. I believe we played Western Michigan, uh, not Western Michigan, we played Central Michigan. I believe they beat us. Pretty sure uh, we would have to check the archives for that. But nonetheless, a good day for CMU getting their first win of the season, at least. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and yeah, rounding it out, uh, Saginaw Valley uh, had a really strong day as well. Uh, rebounded from some rough performances the last few tournaments, but it looks like uh, Cole McCletta, uh, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, uh, just unbelievable all day. I was watching our overtime game. He was ridiculously hard to get out. Uh, you know, we took the better part of almost four minutes, I think, trying to team throw him. He was just fantastic. And the team that he's building around him is very, very strong. So I expect them to keep getting better and keep having great performances. They were fantastic on uh, on Sunday. And yeah, that uh, that wraps it up for another episode of the Neutral Zone Rewind podcast. Uh, we have a long break coming up with, uh, you know, winter break, everything around that time of the year. Uh, after that, we will be looking towards... Uh, Summit Street Slugfest. Kent State is hosting their uh, first tournament in quite a long time. So uh, we're, we expect to see quite a lot of teams for that. And we will uh, we'll get back to you when, when that uh, tournament is played. So yeah, thank you so much for watching.